In May of 2019, we purchased our 2015 Tesla Model S 85D, and every year since then, I've made an update video of the costs of maintenance and ownership of our Tesla. If you're interested in any of those prior videos that contain all of the repairs to our Tesla uh, prior to 2022, I'll link a card above here that will be a playlist to all those videos. Now, in May of 2023, we've owned our Model S for four years and we've now put 63,700 miles on it. The majority of which those miles are from road trips, and many of which I've documented here on my YouTube channel, and I'll put a card above here to a playlist of road trip videos in our Tesla as well. At eight years old and two months, it's pretty much performing the exact same as when we first got it, with the slight exception that the battery has degraded roughly 5% over the time that we've owned it. So it doesn't quite get as much range when we take it on road trips. And also the supercharging is not as fast as it used to be. This is our primary family car and we intend to use it for many more years and put hopefully hundreds of thousands of miles more on it. I brought my wife Jessica out here to give her perspective on what she thinks of driving this car and using it with our kids. It has been a great car for a family car for driving around town and running errands and things of that nature. The kids really like riding in the back seat anytime we give friends rides. They like riding in the, the rear facing seats that are in the trunk. We probably get the most attention for that when we're out and about if I open the trunk and load all the kids in. One other thing I like about it is it's good for darting into traffic. It's got a lot of get up and go. When I borrow other cars to drive, it's a lot noticeably <laughs> lacking in that department when I try and pull out into traffic with other cars. But by and large, it's been a really great car to have around. We have four children and that gives us one extra seat that we have two in the very back in the trunk area and two in the middle section with an extra seat. If we want to take a random person with us here or there, that's nice to have too, but it's been a really great car for us to have for the family. We do also own a 2014 Ford F-250 pickup truck, and we pretty much only use that when we go on trips in our RV, of which we have some videos as well on my channel, and I'm publishing many more in the future. We primarily don't use the truck just simply because it's more expensive to maintain and to operate, and it's very sluggish, and it's it's a big beast of a vehicle, and we just much prefer driving the Tesla. So if we can get away with it, we just always use our Model S when we're driving around town. Someday, hopefully soon, we will switch the truck out for the Tesla Cybertruck, and that will probably be the perfect combination of vehicles that we'll have for many more years. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to take you through my spreadsheet that has all of my ownership costs for the last year in it. But before we do that, we spent some time cleaning the car inside and out. And so let's just do a quick walk around of it and I'll show you how well it's been holding up. I've left all the doors and windows open so I can show you how it looks on the inside as well. Uh, the, the front area has been very useful. I keep my uh, emergency road tools in there for like if we got a flat tire, which has happened before, as well as our mobile connector and some jackets and hats. Uh, the front of the car definitely has some road rash and you know bug stains on it. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast when you're driving on the freeway at high speeds. Coming around over this way, the, the, the paint has some extra dings and scratches in it that we've added, unfortunately, because anytime you have kids around, especially, they're going to do things on accident. Uh, otherwise, the, um, the interior, like the, the carpet and everything, is holding up pretty good. There are some scratches here on the leather, and we actually had this product sent to us to test out. It's this right here. It's a leather recoloring balm. And so I'm going to just in a minute, I'm just going to take you through the steps to apply this and we'll see how well it works. And as you can see on this seat, there are a couple of different scratches. These are probably from people when they're sitting down, if their belt has anything scratchy on it. So we'll see how well that works. But first coming around this way, this is how the back of the car looks. We have the two car seats here for James and Clara. And then coming around here to the back, this is where Lydia and Lucy ride in the two rear facing seats. This by far is the most attention grabbing feature of this car, uh, because I guess it's the most obvious thing when we are like in the grocery store and kids are climbing into the back of the car, people always look over and exclaim about how there are seats back here. Uh, with the kids getting in uh, their dirty shoes, we don't have any carpet protection down here. So it's a little bit on the ratty side and there's some dirt embedded in the carpet, but it's okay. We don't really baby our car. We just use it as a normal car. And then uh, coming around this way, you can see we're currently charging the car. Uh, it's actually charging right now 
off of the solar panels that are on the roof of the trailer right here. And if we look over here, you'll see that it's pulling two kilowatts from the trailer right now. And this is what it looks like from the trailer's perspective. This is the VRM monitoring portal app. So we're right now getting about 1500 watts of solar, but the car is pulling 1888 watts or thereabouts. And so we're discharging the battery at the rate of 629 watts currently. And I've made other videos about that. I'll link a card above on how I do that. So coming around over here to this side of the car, we have one of the extra seats right here that we have in case we have guests that want to ride with us. And then coming around over this way, this is how the driver's side is holding up. There is some wear here on the corner of the seat and that's kind of inevitable. I feel like most cars start to show some wear here eventually, but we'll see how well this balm helps to restore that. And then there is also some wear that is on this side pillar right here on this corner, but that's a minor thing. And I would say I'd never even really noticed that. I've now closed all the doors so that you can see the top of the hood and the doors as well. Obviously the condition of the exterior of a car will vary greatly, especially given time, the owner of the car and what has happened to that car over the course of that ownership will affect its look. We're not trying to have a showroom worthy car, right? So we live in our car, we go on a lot of trips and we have kids. So it definitely has dings and scrapes and the paint isn't as perfect as it used to be, but that's okay. So let's try out this recoloring balm now. In the box that it comes with, this is the balm itself. It's kind of like black shoe leather polish. Uh, it comes with some gloves. And then there's the, this is a soft pad. I'm guessing this is for buffing out the, uh, the recoloring balm after you've applied it. And then here's a sponge. So that's for applying it. And then lastly, there's a little, just a regular paintbrush in here, it looks like, probably for applying the balm in smaller uh, applications. Looking at the inside, it's actually more of a liquid consistency than I expected. It's, it's thick, but it's not as thick as uh, like say black shoe polish. So I'm gonna get some of this on the sponge and we'll try applying it. The instructions say to basically just clean the leather and then rub in this balm and then rub it off. This is what it looks like with the lid completely removed. So you can see it's kind of a, a gelatinous consistency. So let's go ahead and dab a little bit on a, I've already put a little bit on, just getting it off the lid. So I've gotten a little bit of the balm on this. And then coming over here, you can see here's some scratches. So I'm just going to rub in a circular pattern, rubbing this in. I have finished applying the balm along the, the back here and you can see that all those scratches are pretty much gone now. There is some irregularity and so what I need to do now is uh, rub it with this soft uh, kind of, it's like a fur actually material. And let's see how that makes it look. Here is the end result. I've applied the restoring balm all the way up the back of the chair. There's still a little bit of swirls I need to buff out, but this does do a good job of restoring. If there's any scratches, it makes it all look black again. It does have right now a little bit more of a matte appearance to it. Whereas say, for instance, down here on the bottom of the seat, it's a little shinier than uh, where I have applied it. Overall, I would say this Dr. Toll's leather recoloring balm works pretty good. I will put a link in the description down below to this product if you'd like to pick it up and try it out for yourself. So this is the spreadsheet I was referring to where I keep track of all of the repairs to our Tesla over the course of our ownership. And like I said, all of these are covered in past videos. I have even talked to Tesla employees and found out what all of the repairs were prior to my ownership. And I have those included in past videos as well. So for today's video, we're just going to be talking about those repairs that have occurred since my last video, which was in May of 2022. So starting here in June of 2022, we got a new set of tires. Now tires are the number one biggest expense of owning a Tesla because they wear out quickly due to they have a lot of power and they're heavy. That being said, due to the mileage warranty, they don't cost as much as they potentially could otherwise. Now you'll see that we purchased new tires back in May of 2021. So those tires barely just lasted a year, pretty much exactly. And you'll see here as well that the pr previous set of tires got 17,395 miles on them before I replaced them. That is the worst amount of miles that I've gotten on any prior set of tires. I don't know what happened there. I mean, these tires had 80,000 mile warranty, as you can see, I have noted uh, down here. 
And so out of the 80,000 mile mileage warranty, they only got 17,000 miles on them. Now, to be fair, I did replace them at 430 seconds, which is the upper limit of being able to have your tires replaced under the mileage warranty. But one of them got a bad hole in it, which I'll be covering in a future video here on my channel when we were on a camping trip. And so I just decided to replace all four tires at 430 seconds. If we come down here to when we replaced those tires now with the Michelin Cross Climate 2 tires, which have a 60,000 mile warranty, here you can see that the out-of-pocket cost actually was $370 after the mileage warranty kicked in. You can see right here that $208 per tire was reimbursed to be due to the mileage warranty. And so that saved a total of $834. So moving on to tire rotations, we've done that once in the last year. Uh, I do it about every 5,000 miles, and you can see that that tire rotation currently has 4,383 miles on it. So I'll be getting it rotated in about 700 miles. And that's a free service that Discount Tire does for anybody that brings their vehicles in. Uh, but I, part of the reason why I do that, because they, they measure my tread depth, and I just like to have that on file. I, I could get my own tread depth meter, and I, I may do that one day. But right now, they're pointing out that they are at 930 seconds. So they've only gone down uh, 130 seconds of tread depth in uh, that amount of time from when I had them installed in June down to December. So then the big upgrade of the year was the MCU2 upgrade. And I've already made a video about that, which I will link in a card above. But keep in mind, this is like kind of it was optional, but it also was pretty required because our old one was starting to malfunction pretty badly. Navigation didn't work. I, I covered all that in that video. So ultimately, I decided to go ahead and have the MCU upgraded to MCU2 from MCU1. The MCU, I think, is the media control unit. In any case, we did that in December of 2022, and the car at that time had 123,000 miles on it, and it cost us $1,876. So that is by far the most expensive single thing that we have paid for on our car. And aside from this, I mean, maybe tires have now added up to that amount. I haven't looked. In any case, it was worth it. We were happy to have that upgraded. I don't feel like it is well priced. I think it's expensive for what you get for it. But considering the lackluster performance we had previously, it, it, we like having this updated. And then lastly, I've replaced the windshield wipers. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm realizing I probably should go check the cabin air filter. You can see I had that done back in May of 2021. So it's been two years. And if I haven't done it since then, which I may have and just maybe didn't put it in here, I need to go double check that. But those are only around $20 for a new cabin air filter. And that's everything here on the spreadsheet. Here in the Tesla app on my phone, this used to not show up, but once we upgraded to MCU2, it now shows the charge stats. And as you see up here at the top, I have year selected, and it's going from May 2022 through the end of April 2023. And you can see here it's showing that we've charged a total of 5,261 kilowatt hours and that we spent $499. Now, that is the equivalent of what we would have spent if we didn't have solar paying for it at our house. The way, way I have it configured in the app is that supercharging is zero and the home is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we scroll down here, it gives you kind of an idea of you know, how much electricity each month has come from what source and how much we've been using. And then scrolling on down here, it's estimating that we have saved $2,000 compared to what it might have been if we used a, a gas equivalent car. So this is kind of fun just in brief to show this, but you're costs vary dramatically based on how much you drive and where you're charging from. So this is not very helpful to see my specific numbers. This is Teslify. It is a tool that connects to the Tesla API and I give it my login credentials and it monitors the car and all of our drives and charges and things like that. If you're interested in Teslify, I'll put a referral code in the link below and that will give you the first two weeks for free. Right here you can see that I first signed up for Teslify in late 2019. That was just before we went on our trip down to Orlando, Florida from Utah and I'll put a card above to that. Over the course of that time, what it's doing is it's looking at any time that we've charged the car to 90% or above, you can see it shows that right here, and it is looking at what the estimated mileage would be at 100%. So this over here, you can see it, this line is 255 miles, this is 260 miles. When our car was brand new, it had a 270 miles of range. So by the time we got it, it was down here, well, actually, if I remember right, it was pretty close to 262 miles of range. But by the time I signed up for Testify, it was down here. 
and you know this is at 257 and it kind of just goes up and down based on various conditions i'm not entirely sure why it varies so much but you can see that there's generally a downward trend so that's just the nature of battery degradation over time and right now we are sitting at about 248 miles of range and based on my experience on recent trips we've done that is pretty accurate what this doesn't reflect is the limited speed of supercharging which has been starting to be more noticeable and i am not loving that but that is the nature of the beast and someday when we have our cyber truck we'll probably use it primarily on big road trips so down here if you see i put in the custom range of 270 miles of range and so it's pointing out that we have now experienced eight percent battery degradation over 127,000 miles and eight years. I hope this has been helpful seeing how well our Tesla has been holding up after these many eight years and 127,000 miles. We don't baby our car like I said. We take it on many trips. We have kids. They're naturally kind of hard on vehicles unfortunately and so far it's been working just fine for us and we haven't had any major problems and it's never left it us stranded or anything. Everything that we've repaired has generally been pretty optional with a couple of exceptions. Now, uh, we will continue to make these recap videos every year of what it's been costing us to own it, but I hope this has been helpful to give you an idea of what you might expect if you're looking for a car like this out on the used car market on how well it should hold up. And I anticipate still getting many hundreds of thousands of miles more on this car. So with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Yeah.